welcoming Sir Malcolm Rifkind, co-chair of the Belvedere Forum Steering Committee. Minister, Ambassador, ladies and gentlemen, it, it is an unusual pleasure. One always starts with these sort of occasions by saying how delighted one is to be here. But as it's, I think, either the first or second country that I've only visited in the last year and a half, it is a, a privilege for all sorts of reasons. And it's a mark of the relevance of Belvedere that as a relatively new initiative, begun only a few years ago, it then faced, as have so many other organizations, this extraordinary frustrating gap when we've been unable to meet in person. And if anyone had any doubts about the, the, the importance that so many people attach, not just to Polish-British relations, but the way in which the Belvedere Forum can enhance those relations, it's the fact that here at this very first opportunity, uh, we are uh, all here today in person and many others who are watching. And I echo the tributes that have been made to PRISM and to uh, Chatham House for the incredible work they've done in breaking this together. You'll be relieved to know that I don't intend to make a long speech. I shall follow the very wise precedent of King Henry VIII of England, uh, who on one occasion said to his uh, six wives, he said, please do not worry, I do not intend to keep you long. <laughs> <laughs> so on that basis, I just want to make two general points in these short introductory comments. It's been said by Robin and by others that uh, the Belvedere Forum is about civic society. It's not about governments speaking to governments, politicians speaking to politicians. It's about developing the civic society of so many aspects of our respective communities, all of whom have very important things to contribute. But you know, the, the importance of the forum will be measured not just by the agreeableness of the conversations, but by the quality of the exchanges. And the quality of the exchanges have to be based on genuine feelings on many issues, some of which are quite controversial. And it's not just going to be a question of whether Polish and British speakers disagree with each other. It's whether within the Polish delegation or within the British delegation there will also be differences of opinion. And if civic society means anything worth having, it is that ability to speak openly, not just on general subjects, but on sensitive topics as well, expressing different views, either respecting our different national backgrounds or, res or reflective of the internal debates uh, within each uh, of our countries. So Belvedere, I think, is so far fulfilling that test, but it's a test that has to be uh, judged each year and hopefully it will become much more significant. And occasionally that means saying disagreeable things. Occasionally it might mean upsetting people, but as long as it's done in a courteous and proper way, uh, that's all the stuff of a free uh, society and something we should be very, very pleased uh, about. So at the moment, for example, our Polish colleagues will no doubt wish to raise issues about the consequences of Brexit. And there will be some issues which may be actually not very agreeable to British ears. And, of course, debates exist within Britain itself on that very same subject. So that will be one example. But there are other examples as well. British delegates may be interested, as are many Poles, in the debate within Poland on whether there are intrusions into the rule of law, whether there are difficulties developing in what are seen to be the principles of a free and liberal democratic society. Uh, only a couple of days ago, I was contacted by someone in Britain who was concerned that there's not enough discussion between Poland and Britain about the restitution issue, the question of whether people who had lived in Poland until the Second World War, some Jewish, some non-Jewish, uh, had been properly uh, dealt with with regard to claims that might be made for property they lost at that time. These are sensitive issues, but we shouldn't be finding it difficult to be embarrassed about them. I said there were two points I wanted to make. The second and final one is this. We're actually entering into extraordinary new territory, not just in relation to Belvedere, but in relation to all political and social issues that we're all dealing with, either as politicians, academics, historians, journalists, uh, or whatever. Because two things are happening, and both featured in our agenda today and tomorrow. And I'm thinking of COVID, and I'm thinking of climate change. And in the history of mankind, so far as I'm aware, it is an extraordinary and not very agreeable coincidence that for the first time in human history, we are either facing literally as we speak uh, or are increasingly realizing the imminence 
of massive threats to the world as a whole, where every single member of the human race, every single person of whichever country they belong to, is equally affected either by COVID uh, or increasingly by climate change. So our debates can only be partly national debates or national comparisons. And you know, when it comes to issues like COVID or climate change, there isn't a left, a right, and a center as there is in the political world. I'm not sure that either COVID recognizes that, and certainly climate change won't. So Belvedere has an important contribution to make in ensuring not just these issues are discussed, but openly, frankly, without fear or favor, and recognizing that we are just a very small part of a global debate which is going to affect and determine the planet on which we are all living. So it's quite a healthy and substantial burden to be bearing, but I think the group of people involved in this conference are well able to handle it. Thank you very much indeed.